Hey everybody, uh, this is Cheryl and welcome to Tipsy Tuesday. Um, this week I'm going to touch on salt. Now, salt, as we know, has been around for forever and it's uh, used in all kinds of cooking, and canning, and all that. We're not going to touch on food. Um, I'm going to touch on some other things that uh, salt can be used for. Now, I actually Googled uh, types of salt because I wanted just to see, you know, what they had to say about it. And I was surprised to find um, 12 different types of salt. Um, there's the table salt, which uh, table is harvested from the ground and iodine is added to it. And that's iodized table salt. Then there's kosher salt, sea salt, Himalayan pink salt, black Hawaiian salt, red Hawaiian salt, and pickling salt. Those are the main ones. However, there are several varieties of um, Hawaii, uh, sea salt, and uh, black salt is actually made from Himalayan pink uh, salt. And, things are added to it and it's baked and um, that makes your black salt. Now it's not the same as the black Hawaiian salt. The black Hawaiian salt and the red Hawaiian salt was actually harvested from volcanoes and the area of volcanoes uh, in Hawaii. Uh, so there is a difference between black salt and Hawaiian black salt. Okay, um, but. I'm not going to go into too much detail about that. I am going to go in and research it more because I found it to be very fascinating. All I did was type in on Google types of salt and um, came up with some really great stuff. Um, what I'm going to focus on is using salt as a cleaner uh, for uh, hygiene, uh, health and hygiene and um, I'm in a fun, fun activity. So um, the first thing I want to touch on is using salt as an abrasive to clean with. Um, one of the things is if you get coffee or tea in a light colored cup that's stained, um, you just take and sprinkle some salt in your cup with a little bit of water to form a paste and rub it around in there to get the stain out and then wash your cup as regular and it will bring out your stains in your light colored cups. Uh, another one is uh, cleaning on baked, baked on messes like in uh, baking dishes, uh, um, on your stove top, uh, in your oven, any place where there's a baked on, you know, food spills and, and it bakes onto your stove top or in your baking dish or something like that. Um, you just form a, a paste with salt and water and you just uh, use it like an abrasive. You just scrub it and then wipe it off, you know, wash it off like you normally would. Um, one little extra hint is on your cleaning your uh, stove top, if you rub uh, the stove top with cinnamon, a uh, little bit of cinnamon sprinkled in with your salt and then wash your stove with that and wipe it off as normal. Then the next time you cook, you, you're going to have that uh, scent of cinnamon, uh, depending on how much cinnamon you use. Um, also, we all need to remember salt uh, to uh, put out a grease fire if your grease fire has uh, to caught, you know, if your pan is caught on fire. Uh, remember first the lid. Um, if it's too big, uh, get out. You know, use a fire extinguisher. But salt is one of those. And salt is actually the one I use. I have to admit, uh, in my 58 years, I have never had to deal with a salt fire, knock on wood here, or a grease fire. Uh, I, I don't, I, I'm a firm believer if you're cooking with grease, you better be right there just you know my way of thinking the way grandma taught me um, but it some things to remember salt used to extinguish a fire it's going to take a lot of it 
So if you don't have a lot of it, use some other method. Uh, remember that flour and baking powder is not to be used, salt and baking soda. The reason why I think salt is a better option is you can tell the difference between salt compared to flour, baking powder, baking soda. Okay, um, so just my suggestion there, uh, my opinion on that, you know, you may have a different opinion. Um, I do like keeping a container of salt by my stove just in case. I've never had to, had to deal with it, but it's there just in case. Um, okay, so let's move on to um, hygiene, health and hygiene. Um, if you take a teaspoon of salt and dissolve it into a one pint container of hot water, um, then you can take a cotton rounds um, or cotton balls, uh, get them wet. You don't want them dripping wet, but you want them, you know, moist. Lay, lay them over your eyes and lay down for 15 minutes. Be a total rest for 15 minutes with those over your eyes, and it will eliminate the puffiness. Uh, you know, from if you have colds, you know how you get puffy eyes, or if you've been crying, or uh, you know, just lack of sleep, and you get puffy eyes. Uh, salt, warm salt, uh, soaked in cotton, and lay on your eyes will help eliminate the puffiness on your eyes. Um, if you take uh, salt and you want to actually crush it because uh, you can do it in several ways, but kind of crush your eyes so it's more of a, a sandy uh, texture and mix it with uh, baking soda. Um, and you want to use one part salt to two parts baking soda. Um, you can sprinkle that you know, in your hand, use your wet toothbrush, dip it in there and brush your teeth with it. Uh, so it makes a good toothbrush, uh, toothpaste. Uh, that's one part salt to two parts baking soda. And remember you want it, uh, you don't want it the rough abrasive salt, you want it more crushed. Okay, not, not necessarily a powder, but more finely crushed. You want a little bit of abrasion, but not a lot. Um, so those are my health and hygiene suggestions. Um, now, uh, one issue that we have a big problem with here is fleas. Um, to help eliminate fleas out of your carpet, you can take salt and sprinkle it on your carpet or your rugs and um, let it stand for several hours. And, and it's not going to work if you just sprinkle it on and vacuum it up. You want to kind of let it sit there for a little bit. Um, but you let it stand and then you vacuum your carpets thoroughly. Um, that will vacuum up uh, any fleas, but it also vacuum up any eggs that's in the carpet. And if you don't empty your uh, vacuum bag immediately, you can actually sprinkle some salt into your vacuum bag and that will help kill any eggs as you know, they hatch out. We, we've empty our vacuum uh, container immediately after vacuuming. That way we don't have any issues with uh, left behind fleas. Um, you want to repeat that uh, every six weeks depending on uh, how bad your flea infestation is. Um, so uh, we actually tried to do it at least once a month simply because we do have really bad infestation. We have stray cats in our neighborhood and we live right on the edge of the woods where raccoons and possums and what have you bring fleas into the drywall park. So, uh, so salt on carpets will help with your flea infestation. Now for the fun thing, uh, we've all heard of salt though, you know, uh, one of those uh, kind of little crafts that's been forgotten. Now, I'm going to hold this up. I wrote the recipe. I'm going to hold this up to give you a chance to write it down. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, this is a fun activity for uh, 
kids to make uh, like Christmas ornaments um, and things like that. Um, I am going to give you a chance to pause the video so if you need to uh, write this down, you need more time to write it down. Um, but basically what you do is you take uh, and you uh, make up this dough and you can store it if you don't use it all at once. But you uh, roll it out like cookie dough um, and you can store it in air con tight containers. Now if you are going to store it uh, you do want to add vegetable oil to it that will help keep it moist uh, store it in an airtight container um, I don't if I'm going to be using it all I don't usually add the vegetable oil to it I only do that if I'm going to store it for a while um, but you roll it out like cookie dough and you can um, uh, cut it out with cookie cutters or you know whatever shapes you want or you can just mold it however you want to do it. But once you get your shapes, you want to make sure that you poke your hole in the top of it so that you have a hole to add ribbon for hanging. Um, you bake it in the oven for, uh, it's at 250 for uh, one hour. Um, yeah, um, or until it's dry. Um, you know, if they're thicker pieces, it might take a little bit longer, but 250 uh, for at least an hour. Okay, then you let them cool. Once they've cooled, then you can use just about anything to decorate them. You can use all, any kind of paints or glitters or however you want to decorate them. Um, once that dries, um, you can use any kind of a, a clear varnish or sealant. Um, we use, uh, for smaller ones, we use clear nail polish. Um, that works really well for uh, sealing them up. Um, then once that's dried, then you can add a ribbon or wire or whatever you're gonna use, string, twine, whatever you're gonna use to form a little hanging ornament for your tree. Um, you can also make little statuettes and stuff out of it and again, uh, it's going to require a little bit longer baking time. Um, you do want to make sure you bake them thoroughly because if you don't, they can mold and uh, get mold and mildew inside and, and cause them to fall apart. Um, but it's a fun, fun thing to do uh, for making various things um, for uh, your kids, you know, your kids to do or just decorating your home or whatever. Um, uh, back when I was growing up, that was the popular thing to do to uh, put your child's uh, footprint. You know, when your child was born, you made salt dough and you pressed your little, the little foot into the dough and you formed the little uh, hand or footprints. Uh, a lot of times they would do the little footprints with the little handprints on the top, you know. Uh, that was one of the things that they did back when I was growing up. Um, but just a fun little thing to do there. Um, I know I'm going to get tons of comments on, on uh, uses of salt. I do welcome them very much. I did not touch on a whole lot of stuff. There is a lot of other uses for salt. And like I said, I did not even go into the cooking, the canning, and all of that because that's a matter of taste. Uh, and matter of recipe, so uh, I'm, I didn't touch on that, but for other uses, I know there's plenty of other uses out there, uh, and I welcome the comments. Uh, next week, we will be doing viewers edition, um, and uh, I'll be presenting all of your comments um, for uh, the past six episodes. And uh, so that should be a lot of fun. We, we do have a lot of comments and I am looking forward to that one. Um, and I also uh, have another video that uh, had a lot of tips and ideas that I'm gonna include in that various, uh, in that viewer's edition. It, it is not a Tipsy Tuesday video, it's another video, but I am gonna include that one as well because it did have a lot of tips in it. 
All right, y'all have a nice day. Talk to you later. Bye.